Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the second lesson in this series, An Introduction to Unreal Engine. In this video, we will create our first project using a blueprint template, and I will give a general overview of the main editor window. In the description below, I have put links to other training material that you may find useful. That said, start Epic Launcher and go to your library tab and let's get started. Welcome back to your Epic Launcher library for your engine. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a new project and explore the user interface. So go ahead and hit launch on engine 4.22.3. Once this is opened up, it'll show you all your current projects that are installed, and you'll notice on my version that some of these look darker than others. The ones that look darker are installed for different ver engines. Now I can open these from the 4.22 engine, but doing so will ask me to upgrade the content to that engine. But I'm going to assume you have no projects, and since you're following this tutorial, we're going to create a new project. So click the New Projects tab. And in here, you'll have a choice of different types of templates. Templates are just a pre-built sort of system that you can use to quickly develop a new game. They come in two types, Blueprint and C++. The two major differences you're going to notice in these templates are that the Blueprints will come with your VR and AR templates already here, while the C++ doesn't have these options. More importantly, the difference between the Blueprint template and the C++ template is the content included is either going to be written with Blueprints or with C++. So notice there's first person in both of these. The camera and motion controller in the Blueprint version will have a Blueprint script that you can use, and the C++ version will have a C++ class file that you can use. Now. You can do blueprints in the C++ template, and you can do C++ in the blueprint templates. Unreal Engine is optimized to use both blueprints and C++. A blueprint is a visual scripting system. It runs the same way as C++. The major difference, though, is that C++ is only one step away from machine code, whereas blueprints have to convert the visual script into C++ and then into machine code. But, as I said, Unreal is optimized to use both of these together. So it doesn't really matter which you use in your own projects. For this part of the tutorial, however, we will be starting in Blueprints. In the next portion of the tutorial, where we repeat a lot of what we're going to do here, we will start with a C++ template. And again, a template is just an easy way to build your uh, game up quickly. So we're going to start with a third person template and I already have a folder set up for this. It's going to be the platformer folder here and I'm going to give this project a name. So the folder is where you're installing the project to or where you're creating the project and the name is the name of the project. So this will be platformer BP for blueprint and I'm just going to put YT at the end so I know it's for my YouTube videos. You'll have three options up here as well. You'll have desktop or console, where you can also do it as a mobile or tablet game, but we're going to do desktop or console. Then you have maximum quality or scalable 3D or 2D. We are going to start with maximum quality. And then you'll have the option of with starter content and no starter content. I'm going to start with starter content. Once you've done that, go ahead and click Create Project. This might take a few minutes, so I'm going to wait for this to run through, and then I'll resume the video. Alright, so once it loads up, you should get a screen like this. I'm just going to quickly dismiss my plugins, because I don't need it. So this is the Unreal Editor. I'm going to go through this left to right, exploring the various things that are here. So on this far left side, we have our modes. So currently, we are in place mode, where we can place things into the world, such as starting points. So I drag that into the map, and I can drag in a starting point. Just going to go ahead and delete that. 
We can drag in shapes like this basic cube here. We also have our lighting options, which we'll go into more detail later on. But just so you're aware, the directional light is very similar to a sun. It's infinitely far away from the player. A point light creates a, you know, a, it's like a light bulb. It creates a point of light that illuminates around an area. A spotlight is just like that, a spotlight. We have various camera options for cinematic scenes. We have various visual effects, built-in geometry for easy de design of spaces in our game. And we have various other things we can include. We'll go over some of these in more detail later on. Also in our modes, we have our landscape where we can create, if I just bring the camera out, a landscape that will cover that area. We can then paint onto the landscape different textures and different looks. So we can create a earth scene where we have dirt and grass and everything layered on top of each other. And then we have foliage where we can drag assets from our content window into here and paint those onto the map without having to place it individually. And then we have a geometry editor which allows us to make changes to the geometry of elements in our world. For the most part throughout this tutorial, we will be only focusing on the place tab here. Above this part of the screen, along here we have our toolbar. And some important things to notice are our settings and our blueprints and our play button. The play button allows us to test the level. So I go ahead and click that right now. We're going to be in that third person mode around this character and we can move around the map and test it out to see if everything is working correctly in the world. Now while I'm in this window, if I want to get my mouse back, I can hold Shift F1 and there's my mouse. Also, we can end it. We can even pause it. We use pausing for debugging. Our settings is very important. In here we'll find various uh, setting tools, but the most important to know about is probably the project settings, which allows us to very rapidly change things in the IEN file or the INI file for our current project. Next is our blueprints. And blueprints is important when we want to make changes to say the level blueprint. So the level is what's shown in here, otherwise known as a map. This screen, this part of the screen is known as our viewport. And in our viewport, we have a few different options for how we want to look at the world. We can have the lighting on. So what lighting is, is that light up there, that sun is shining down here is creating shadows. As you can see, right there we have some shadows. But sometimes you might be working in a dark environment where there are no lights on your map and you want to be able to see anything. So you can go to unlit and you can just see what it would look like as rough geometry. You might even want it to be wireframe so you can see what it looks like in wireframe. So if you want to get rid of this thing that's around you, this sort of mesh that's all like pervasive and seems to be in front of your camera and around everything else, is turn off your skybox in this right hand side box. So if I go into the search and type in sky, we have my sky sphere blueprint right here. All I'm going to do is click that and I can see the geometry without the little wireframe around my camera. Just going to go back to lip mode now. And then we can also change how we're looking at it. So right now this is the perspective mode. We can also go to an orthographic mode and have a top down view, which will automatically change over to the wireframe. We can change it to lit or unlit. We also have our bottom, left, right, any view you want to use. Also in this window, we have our movement settings. So these three buttons here are our basic geometry buttons. This first one allows us to select and move an object in the world. This second button allows us to rotate objects in the world as well. And this third button allows us to scale up objects and or scale down objects as we see fit. You can switch between these three buttons by clicking them. We're hitting the space bar. We're hitting E for rotate and R for scale. These buttons allow us to change how the objects move in our world. So this will move objects 10 units. So 10 unreal units, which is approximately 10 centimeters. 
Maybe though I only want to move it one centimeter or one unreal unit so I can switch to that and move it smaller distances. So that's gonna move slightly. I'll show you an example, that's gonna be 500. So when I move it, it's gonna move a fair amount. I'm just gonna set this back to 10, the default. And the same for rotation, if I wanna change what, how many degrees it will rotate when I rotate, I can click this button and I have various rotation options and same for how much an object will scale up. On our right hand side here we have our world outliner and you'll notice there are folders in here that help organize the objects in this world. This just shows you a list of the objects that are currently placed into the world. So I'll even show you objects that aren't visible in gameplay such as this reflection sphere that I've just highlighted. So I hit play, you can't see that sphere I had selected. Some objects like blocking meshes, so things like those meshes there, aren't going to be visible to the player, but you as a developer are going to want to be able to see them. Below the world outliner, we have our details and world settings panel. So if I select, say that reflection sphere again, I can get the details of that sphere. I can see its location, its rotation, its size. I can see how much of an area it influences. What you see in your details panel outside of this transform will vary from what object to object you click. So if I click the cube mesh, I'm gonna see what the static mesh is. So it's gonna be a cube. I'm gonna see the material that's used to make it. The world settings panel will tell you about the setting of the quote unquote world. This is only related to the map or the level that you're currently looking at. Everything in Unreal relates to the level that you're currently looking at. And the very bottom here, this is our content browser. Now I strongly recommend that you click this button on the far left that says show or hide the source panel. We want to show it. We want to see what our source panel is. Now, I want you to go ahead and explore things inside of this. See what there is. Place a few objects in and mess around with this map. Don't worry if your map is gonna look vastly different than what I currently have on screen. Don't worry about getting it back to what it looks like now. Do what you want in this map. You won't be using it too much. In fact, I'll be deleting this map from my copy of the project. Now, in the next video, your outliner is going to look a little bit different than mine and that's perfectly fine and that's just simply because I'm going to be removing some things that I know I'm not going to be using throughout the series. The only reason I'm removing them is because I'm going to be uploading this to a repository that you guys can download a copy of the project from and in the starter content there's a lot of things I don't need that eat up a lot of space. By removing these it means there's a smaller uh, file that I'll have to upload and a smaller file that you guys can download. I'm going to be copying the things out that I know I'll be using throughout the series. So that said, have fun, play around with this map a bit, and see what you can learn just by playing around. Below will be some documentation that I recommend that you take a look at as well. If you've liked this video, make sure to hit that like icon below. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. As always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.